you know, it's it's about time that we talk indie comedy. What makes a great indie comedy? <laughs> Welcome to the Film Throughout Podcast. I am Chris Gore, and I am proud to have on today the writer, director, and star of Vanilla, which is currently out. You can now you can you can purchase this film. You can purchase it, rent it, whatever your preference is. I like to buy it. I don't know. That's just my preference. I'm building a library. Will Dennis, really excited to have you on the show. Um, Thank you for having me. This is very exciting. <laughs> Well, it's because I, I love your film. And I also think that what you did too is one of the hardest things to do, right? Like I think that indie comedy is, is very difficult because most comedy is driven by, you know, your Judd Apatow cast of characters. Like, I don't know if that guy's funny, but I remember him from something. Right, right, right. And you, you look familiar too. I feel like I have seen you in other things. Uh, I wish know. I wish I had that to, really? to draw on. Yeah, I'm pretty fresh to this whole the whole uh, public facing community of filmmakers for comedy specifically. Um, you know, did did the improv thing, do a lot of short form stuff, but uh, this is my first like big swing. So it's nice that it's like out and people are going to be able to see it. It's, it's I'm very excited about it. Well, they should. I, first of all, uh, we could use a comedy in these times. Yeah. Right? <laughs> And and what I love what you did with Vanilla is you took some of the things that we've seen in indie films like The Road Trip, and it's a completely fresh take on it. You play the lead character who's this guy who is sort of a, you could probably just type, generic white guy. That's just. Yeah. And that was kind of the intent behind it a little bit is to kind of kind of satirize that person. Um you know, the progressive, like self-appointed, super progressive guy uh, who thinks he's very, you know, progressive and woke, but hasn't really been a part of uh, anything that's challenged those beliefs. And so it's kind of easy to kind of come across as that. Um, and yeah, this movie ideally is a little bit about like, oh, what happens when someone who's self-professed as progressive actually has to kind of deal with something a little bit uh, harder, to, harder to stomach or deal with. See, I, I love that aspect because it's not, the movie's not preachy. I think when people hear woke, they think, oh no, is this a social <laughs> justice film? It's not. It it talks about those issues, but in a very human way. I think a lot of it is the lead actress. She's, oh, she's great. Amazing. What, uh, her name is Joe Firestone. Is oh, that so, uh, Kelsey Bauman Murphy? Kelsey. Okay. Okay. I yeah, got, yeah, I got yeah. that wrong. Um, no, no, it's okay. Joe's also in it. Joe's also okay. In it. Yeah. Okay. I got, I'm looking, I'm looking at the list on IMDb. Um, but, it, uh, but she's, she, Kelsey is amazing in this movie. She, she really is the, the, the provocateur challenging mm -hmm. everything. And I, and I almost in a way, I feel like, I, I don't know if this was your intent, but I, in a way I kind of feel like she's more the male role model. Ro she's the male role in this yeah in this yeah is that uh, fair to say or i don't know if i thought about it as much as gender but i definitely think that it's maybe more her story than it is my character's story i think you kind of start with me but she's actually the one that i think has kind of a more interesting character arc and sh and i might be uh more of the manic pixie dream girl because that was something that i was kind of worried about being like oh i don't want her like a female character to kind of just be a catalyst for male change. And so um, I think it's kind of the reverse in this case where I'm kind of the one who's straight edged and then, you know, having her kind of realize what she wants. Um, uh, and, and yeah, I think she does a terrific job. She's a friend of mine. Uh, we met doing stand up comedy and open mics in New York and I kind of looped her into the project super early and said, Hey, I have this idea for a road trip comedy that I kind of just want to make. And I think it'd be a blast to make with you. And are you interested? And she said, yeah, let's do it. Um, so she has been, she was like kind of part of the process from day one. And I, I think honestly, like without her, uh, we don't have a movie. I think she's so good at it. Well, there's, there's so many great moments in, in and I want to answer actually the question in the subhead indie comedy, vanilla, is it actually funny? <laughs> The answer to that question is yes, it is well, actually great. fun. That's and I, great to hear. And I highly recommend it. There, there are all these, I feel like some of this might be plucked from real life. Some Definitely. of the things, there, there are a couple things, the thing with the fortune cookie. Uh, that, okay, I thought yeah. was continue, really continue, cute. Yeah. And then the thing at the gas station, 
be the, the I, like, I don't want to give too much away, but there are these sort of like rituals that they decide to go through on this road trip that are funny and really have good payoffs. Is oh, any, that's any good of that, to hear. It, any of that plucked from real life? Because it really felt like a non-traditional romance, which I think is what you you, you look for. And in, in, in anything indie, you're not looking for like, I think when you look for anything indie, you're like, don't give me the thing that I normally get at the movie theater, which is like, fast food, right? I want a right. different type of experience and you definitely provide that, but, but was it partially from real life? Well, that's great to hear. Uh, there's definitely a lot of it that is inspired by real life. Uh, the the rough structure it being a road trip uh, where these two characters go to New Orleans on a very early kind of first date, um, that kind of idea was something that I pulled from my own life an ex, a now ex girlfriend, uh, we did that same road trip and very early in our relationship. And I thought it was always kind of like, um, so had some good tent poles for, uh, for a potential story. And then the fortune cookie stuff, I think that was just, I forget when that came about in the writing process. I hadn't done that before in real life. I think the dancing piece, which I, yeah, I don't want to say too much, but the dancing piece in the gas stations, um, I believe an, a friend of mine recommended uh, I think about that because I think that's something they they did on some road trips where they made kind of like rules for the road. Um, so yeah, it's it's kind of a blend. And honestly, it's like, I think that's been one of the fun things about this story is that a lot of it was drawn from real life. And then a lot of it is manufactured and a lot of it is through collaboration with uh, Kelsey and my friend Tom who shot the movie. And then, you know, going through all these drafts of the script, I was able to loop in a lot of people from my kind of uh, indie film scene here in New York. And so I feel like there's a lot of fingerprints on this thing and it's kind of fun to be able to be like, oh yeah, what, where did that idea come from? Um, but a lot of it is inspired by, uh, by um, personal experiences, like the stand-up stuff, the film stuff, the, the tech stuff. Um, I'm still kind of involved in the tech community here in New York as well. So, so the, the tech aspect of the film, there's this, sort of um, B story of you being a programmer, which I actually think, you know what, that's kind of a cool idea for an app, right? And, yeah, I mean, honestly, you know, <laughs> I I'm looking that at going, existed. I, I mean, that that's an app. Like um, it's basically Uber for ice cream. Well, I mean, there's an Uber for everything, but this is kind of like, you know, just like you want ice cream, you get ice cream immediately. Yeah, so, I mean, if Ben and Jerry's is listening, like let's like like let's have them uh let's let's collaborate on this um because yeah i think that app would be a blast um and I, it was something that i uh i was thinking about actually like riffing on with kelsey before this movie came to be and then as this character in the film became a tech person um uh i was like oh this is kind of like because uh, i kind of wanted one of those apps and I, I guess i'm not saying the name of the app because it's a bit of a spoiler but um I wanted the app to be on, kind of teetering on the edge of like, is that a real thing? Could that be a real thing? Um, and uh, and on the edge of satirizing kind of the tech community in that way, because so many of the things that get pitched and launched and become big, great ideas are kind of half jokes when they start. Like 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 Uber for ice cream. And it, and it, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It just, it just sounds exactly. way too it way too real. But I, I I just having seen a lot of I see a lot of indie movies that come out. I think the hardest genre to crack. I think the easiest, and it's I'm not disparaging the genre is horror. I think horror mm. is kind of the easiest genre to crack, which is why you see a lot of first films like um, horror I, I, drama. I think you know is maybe. I think the hardest one, this is just from going to film festivals and seeing so many movies, is comedy. Mm. I think it's a combination of you got to have that great script. You got to have that, like the cast and the sort of, how do you make those, how do you make all those things align? And then what, 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 what makes you think, okay, I'm just going to make this now with whatever money I have. Um, yeah. I, I just, I feel like a lot of the studio level comedies, their crutch is casting right? Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. just going to get all these people. They'll riff on lines and then we'll do it 50 different ways. Then we'll just use the best line. This was a right. very, obviously this is very, I mean, there are clearly some improvised moments, but there it's very well scripted. There's a solid mm -hmm. script. How did, did you go in with any sort of fear or maybe, maybe it's good that you, I didn't, you didn't hear this from me before that <laughs> 
comedy, I think, is the most difficult genre to crack on an indie level. I just, I just think it is because there are no. Yeah. It's all performance and script. It's just, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think honestly, I'm, I'm glad we didn't have this talk then. <laughs> I think, I think a little bit of it was ignorance is bliss. Um, I gravitate towards writing comedy, watching comedy, trying to make people laugh, trying to make things that are funny. Uh, to me, if I'm going to spend, a, you know, years of my life on a project, I want it to be something that is kind of on the lighter side of things. I think that's just kind of like where I uh, defer. And the tone was something that we were navigating through table reads, through, um, different edits of the script, getting feedback from Kelsey, getting feedback from Tom, getting feedback from people who are reading it. And there was actually kind of a luxury we had, which was a result of our uh, indie approach is that we actually shot kind of the road trip section first for eight or nine days at the end of the summer. And then based on everyone's schedule, we couldn't actually come back together for two or three months. So we ended up actually editing kind of the middle section of the film and understanding, oh, some things are coming a little bit more serious. Some things are a little bit more funny. This maybe feels a little hammy. This feels a little uh, uh, maybe too self-serious. And then we could kind of like dial in the tone with actual material and then go in and say, okay, we have the script. Uh, which at that point was the beginning and the end, and we can kind of dial in the tone that way. So I definitely think had we shot it all in one go, the tone at the end of the day might have been a little bit less consistent. Um, but given the luxury of that kind of uh, two-parted production experience, actually, I think it helped us have a more even finished. Ideally, you know, the result is a comedically um, consistent tone throughout. Well, well, I, th I think tone is the most important thing. I mean, it's really the mark of a... Uh, of someone who's a, a a real director is you've got to you got to come up with what that tone is and it's it's so it's so subtle you kind of you know I mean hitting that is just is is so difficult um, but I love this idea that you did the road trip first and then the other scenes after kind of gave it t time to really work out a lot of aspects of it uh, so it paid off is what I'm saying yeah. Yeah, it definitely, I think, was was helpful. I mean, I think the big risk and why people don't do it more often, and rightfully so, is that, you know, people's schedules change and the availability of things change. And, you're, you know, we were shooting some scenes that were obviously supposed to be summer or summer-ish in, you know, the late fall of New York City. And so that, you know, causes some stresses that are like, yeah, you know, would I trade these days for ones in the summer? Maybe, but we had the benefit of having a little bit um, hindsight is twenty twenty. Knowing specifically what we had to shoot and when, so that was that was the upside. So um, you're you're making this. Did you uh, you were ignorant about the whole comedy thing? What, what did you think when it got to promoting the film? Because in a way, like, um, and uh, in, in a way, you know, you're multi hyphenate in the sense of writer, director, star. But then add a couple other things to that hyphenate: promoter, distribution. There's so many aspects like, you know, you played film festivals, so then you got to promote at film festivals. Were you prepared for that experience? No, <laughs> um, not really. I think you just, I mean, I think every, at least for me, my perspective was, and this is the, I think once again, the kind of ignorance is bliss perspective is you hope that the merits of the film are going to carry it to whatever audience, uh, is deserving of that film. And I think that's like partially true. I definitely think there has been um, some silver linings to just putting your work out there and then you never know who's gonna see it and that can lead to new distribution. And then I do think, you know, there's a lot of tactical things that I could have done in hindsight, um, you know, to give the film a little bit more exposure. Uh, but once again, this is this whole thing is uh, is very much a trial by fire experience and me just learning uh, this process as I go on the, you know, indie, very, very indie side of things and trying to just, you know, learn as much as I can before I have to make the decision, but you're going to make a decision, whether that's in production or post-production or distribution, and then you're going to have to live with that. And then a month and a half later, someone's going to be like, you know what you should have done. And you'd be like, yep, you're absolutely right. <laughs> I should have done that. And now, now I know. Um, but, uh, but for example, I think like the film festival thing has been amazing. I think you talked to Dan Schechter, um, with his movie uh, After Class. 
Yeah, and, but yeah. Uh, with Justin Long. And so he's yeah. somebody who be, who's become a friend who I met through film festivals. And he, you know, put my movie uh, on the desk of Gravitas, who eventually ended up distributing it. Uh, and they, you know, reached out to me. So like, it's those kinds of things where on one hand, you do as much work as you can. And at the other hand, you just hope that you keep putting stuff out. And if people like it, then, you know, more people will will be able to see it. But I think as you've learned, it's not, it, it, your job's not done when it's like, okay, I got the distribution deal. See ya. No, no. They, uh, <laughs> they, they yeah. send you, especially someone who's kind of doing a lot of the the producing um, along with my, my friend, Adam uh, Perrier, who produced alongside me. But, you know, the distributor's like, great, we want your film. And you're like, cool, finish line. And then, you know, you get the 20 pages of requirements and deliverables. Right. And that's not even counting the the marketing side. That's just, you know, getting it on the, on all the platforms. So, um, but no, I think, I think it's all important stuff. And, you know, it's every film that you're able to see at home do, goes through all this stuff. So you want to make movies, uh, this is the stuff you got to do. <laughs> it's weird today how like you, you don't just have to be good at filmmaking. There are all these other aspects that come into play now. Um, are, does that, does that hamper like your, I assume you're working on another project, uh, but does that, yeah. does that put a ha- you know, damper on that? Um, I think it just makes you really understand the prioritization of what you have kind of in the works. I mean, I have, you know, another script that I'm working on. I have some short form stuff I make, uh, both for fun. And honestly, I, I've seen some good exposure from it. Um, and then, you know, you're constantly trying to keep juggling and pay the bills all at the same time. Um, so, and, you know, keep up, keeping up a social presence is I think something that's, you know, obviously critical and important. So I, you know, try to do that as best as I can as well. So I think it's a matter of, uh, trying to do everything, (laughs) but at the end of the day, I, I try to come back to this, um, idea that the quality of the material and the quality of the script and the quality of the writing and the quality of performances are at the end of the day, what's going to make you sink or float. Um, so that's kind of the, the solace. And I think it's really easy to get kind of tied into like, Oh, you gotta be tweeting on Instagram. And I think you do, but all that stuff only matters. I think if the end product is something that people enjoy watching. So I I try to come back to that and that helps me kind of, uh, stay sane a little bit. (laughs) I mean, it, social media is like a whole other job in addition oh, totally. to all of this. It's totally, uh, you know, it's and like I think a, there's like a lot of, there's a lot of people who are like, you know, do the indie distribution thing. Don't work with a distributor, go your own route, put it on platforms, right. do all the marketing yourself. And it's like, yes, you definitely can, but you're not, uh, you know, you're essentially doing the the job of several full-time people in order to do that. So uh, there's cost savings, uh, in that way. And maybe there's, you know, some creative upside there, but, uh, it's definitely a trade-off. Um, and, uh, and I think with a movie like this, I, I kind of wanted a team, uh, behind it a little bit to, to help me kind of get it out there. Well, so, um, now that you're removed from the experience of making it, you've now seen it with real audiences who've enjoyed yeah. it. Um, you know, what, what are the, what are the takeaways? Um, what, what, what have you learned from this that you'll bring into the next project? Um, I, tell us like, tell us how to make a great indie comedy, because I, I can just tell you from the, the indie films I've seen, it's the hardest genre to get right. It really is. It's the most difficult. A lot, yeah, a lot of people, I, and I, yeah. A lot of people I, think I really, their indie yeah, films are funny. That. They're not, they're not that funny. I'm telling you, vanilla <laughs> is funny. Vanilla is something. Thank you. And, thank and you. Also, fresh talent too. That like um yourself. I you know like I, I like watching. I'm like I must have seen you before. Was it a stand up <laughs> special or something? You have kind of you know that that look. But um, but what are, what are your takeaways? Thank you. Um, and I'm gonna quote you on the fact that you said it's funny. I'm gonna <laughs> use that. Um, uh, I think I kind of mentioned it, but I think it comes down to the the writing and I think it comes down to the performances and like as the writer and director and performer, I'm sure you're like, this guy's a monster. But having said all that, I don't think I'm going to be acting as much in my future work. I think there are people that um, I'd love to work with. Uh, And the writing process I think of one is me being kind of the steward for the story, but 
Uh, I think what I did relatively well with vanilla is really exposed it to a lot of different people and a lot of different eyeballs and got a lot of feedback and went through tons of revisions that weren't just myself in a room, but uh, getting different feedback from from different folks. So I definitely want to do that again and just know that, you know, every note as critical as it is, is going to make the movie a little bit better. Or, uh, you know, you, you get a review from a film and it's pointing out some imperfections, like those imperfections you can, you can ideally tackle at the script phase. And then uh, just being, you know, nice and respectful of everyone on, on set and, uh, and really understanding that the best idea might come from a moment that uh, you didn't plan. And so I think still being open to that um, in, in future projects. Having said that, there was a lot out of our control in Vanilla. So I would love to have a little bit more control, <laughs> but just understanding so that some of that serendipity um, and some of the laughs in Vanilla, honestly, were things that were not on the page and were not uh, even improvised. They were kind of things we ended up like you know, grabbing or off the cuff thinking that the cameras were done and then those, you know, make it into the movie, add a bit of characterization, get a laugh. So um, continuing to balance that hyper rigorous writing process and the then throwing that out the door when the cameras start rolling. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, writing and directing or the directing and the acting piece was pretty tough. So uh, I definitely for my next project, I would be excited to just focus on the directing and, and see what that experience would be like as well. Are you going to be working with Kelsey again? I feel like she's like yourself. I, I'm, I, 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 you know, I feel like I've seen her, but perhaps I haven't, you know? Um, yeah, she's, I mean, honestly, we both were just interested and excited about making a movie. And, uh, and I thought she was so funny and, you know, in person, charming and charismatic. And uh, I'd love to see her do more stuff. I'd love to work with her again. Um, you know, it's, it was a long, hard process for both of us just cause you know, that's the, what making a movie is, but I think she's so good. And I think she carries the movies in such strong ways that, uh, if, you know, she continues to act, I hope she, she does an awesome, awesome job. I know right now she's doing a lot more on the production side of things, but, uh, I think she's so, so talented. So I hope to see, uh, more with her in it. Cause I think she can go, go far. Well, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of this movie. I think vanilla is amazing. The only thing I could compare it to, I was telling a friend about it the other day and I said, it reminds me of the puffy chair. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. That's, that's, a, I'll take that as a compliment. The Duplass brothers in the sense that it's filled with moments that are funny, but it also, there's a, rea there's a reality underneath. There's a realness to it and a freshness because I haven't seen you know, you or Kelsey act before. So there's a, there's a freshness to it, but there's also this reality that's underneath it. So um, I feel like I, I, bravo, you did, you did an amazing job. What are you doing now? Like you're in lockdown, right? Where, where are you? Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm in my home um, as I've been for the last five or six weeks. I live in uh, Greenpoint, Brooklyn right now. Mm -hmm. um, and so I actually do still do some work in the tech industry. Mm -hmm. uh, so I kind of like split my time between writing this next project and uh, and doing some consulting for for tech startups. So like that that piece is definitely still part of the the puzzle. And as things are kind of uh, a little bit on pause within the film industry, um, kind of doing some consulting and taking some time to write and circulate this next script, which is um, another indie indie comedy that uh, I don't think I'll, I don't think I'll be in this one, but looking forward to uh, getting that one started when, when the time is right and it's appropriate to do so. So you're going to, you're going to get out of lockdown with a script and a pair of six pack abs, maybe some six pack abs going. That's what, whatever the opposite the of abs is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> whatever the opposite of abs is. I, uh, I've, I never thought I'd care as much about like cookware and cooking as I do right now. <laughs> I uh, I like you know, I bought a new pan and I was like really excited about a new pan, which I'm like, what have I become? This is not oh. this is a new part of my personality. That's awesome. Uh, well, uh, are you staying you staying OK and safe? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm in Pasadena. And, uh, you know, what, what 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 can we all do except. Uh, yeah. Watch a lot of movies and talk to other people about <laughs> movies. That's that's what I've been doing. So. Yeah. Um, so, Will, thank you so much uh, for being on the film. Oh, thank you, podcast. Chris. Um, where where can people find you so they can get your their daily dose of funny on your social? Yeah, I mean, 
Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, Instagram is where I kind of am most active, which I'll post uh, mostly like new work and new videos. So uh, Willie Dennis on Instagram, W-I-L-L-Y-D-E-N-N-I-S. And then, yeah, please check out Vanilla if you know you want to watch a road trip comedy that Chris thinks is funny, apparently, which I, is awesome to hear. I think it's funny. And, uh, perfect, perfect. Yeah, so you, Amazon, you iTunes, all the, all, all, the, the all the digital places. All yeah, the digital, all the digital places. places. Vanilla, um, uh, you you need to see it. Like I said, if you love the puffy chair, which I think is a classic, this is sort of in that vein and awesome. And uh, Will, thank you so much for talking to us on the on the podcast. Oh, anytime, Chris. I had a had a good time. I appreciate it. All right, cool. Well, I want you back when you when your next film is out for sure. Oh, please, you'll be you'll be my first stop. I'd love to. Awesome. Take care. Bye. Take care, Chris. Thanks. Bye.